Yes. So we have first on the agenda the tourism revenue preservation fund. We have three items under it. The first one is a budget update. Yeah, so as I said in the email, there wasn't anything significant from the last budget update, um, but just gave you guys numbers so you could see what you have available. Uh, you got 144,000 available and unallocated, 242 in public ex improvement expenses. As you can see, the allocations are going to take effect July 1st. Um, but I mean, okay. can you tell? I, I kind of was trying to follow. This. So tell me where's the unallocated drawing on 2020? Where are we? Uh, sure. Oh, sorry, sorry. So the unallocated is is what's highlighted in orange. One forty four four thirteen top right. Okay, that's it. Did you follow it all? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so you can see how much you have available. Like I said, there's nothing like substantial on the budget update. I just wanted to give you guys updated budget figures since you have some requests before you today. I, would, I do have a question. Why sure. is on the packet landing maintenance on in this budget? Is the there... way it's that we be ongoing, we cover the maintenance of that packet landing. So it's going to carry over into the 2023. No, no, I just was curious why, of all the things, maintenance of that is like a it was because just one of the public improvement allocations that nobody was after we had given happen. funds to build it nobody wanted to maintain it so, so just a, just query because I, sure. I um the um the vets that actually come down there so do, does this include like if the they need new flags and things like that or are the vets think, still doing yeah that? i think the vets are still doing it. i'll be included it was to cover the cost of town employees going over there to, maintain the Got structure it. and cut the grass and all that stuff, the whole packet landing area, trap waste removal of the trash. The 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 we are like, okay. That's, <laughs> they finally moved in. They? Yeah, and the, and the dog bags need to be replaced. Uh, but um, if you want somebody to be a point person on that, I'm there every day. So I'll just keep eyes on it. If we're, if we're funding it, I'm happy to. Okay, it doesn't look like we provided any funding last year for it. That usually comes from DPW. We'll let us know what they need. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on the budget? So we got two requests for funding: roadway banners and we would way climbing signage design. Correct. So you want to you know, throw something up on them? Sure. I'm going to work on that. Look up the pack. Look up the pack. So the banners, um, we got the quote. Mario was nice enough to help us with the quote. I added it all up. Um, when you also throw in installation, I think a good figure would be ten thousand dollar budget for the project. Um, so I think I said in the email that could come from physical improvement or public improvements. It could come from wherever you want, really, but uh, it's definitely it complies with the public improvement expense. So at least one six a. Yep. So. These ones would go out in front of Yarmouth Town Hall. Um, these ones would be on Parker's River Bridge. And these, one of these two, whichever you decide, um, would go in Route 6A, in the Village Center area. I have to touch on blue, just, just for my comment, please, Steve. Okay, that's fine. Anybody else have any thoughts or comments on either of those two? They also, I would just throw in the Parker's River Bridge design. Mary sent a, a revised design for you guys to consider that had the uh, Yarmouth Chamber of Commerce web address on the bottom as well. I have that somewhere if you want. Right. So let's go back to the ones on six So does anyone has already given his thoughts to more number of anybody else? I think that's Kyle's call. I'm trying to get it to stay up here. That's Kyle's decision, but um that's up for you guys to make the final. These are the ones that we came up with. I like them. I like the blue. Okay. Sounds like you got. Is that colonial blue? Yes. We got two blues. It's like okay. it's like navy blue, or I forget colonial what it's called. Blue. It's like and I blue and it's some sort of historic okay. blue. We got the blue. <laughs> from from where to where? Sure. I think I got that somewhere. 
So would you like a motion? No, I don't think I told you. Want to do this separately or together? He's just going to answer one other question first before we. I just asked from where they start to where they finish. Yeah. From. And it's every poll. It's not every poll. Uh, uh, there's five of them in, in Route 6A. Go. It would be these five for that have the uh, the tax associated with them. Um, so I mean, we could go, we could do more, but my thought was to start somewhat small. Don't shock people up there. Uh, we still have to go through Old Kings Highway to for the design to get approval. Yep, and the board of selectmen also need to approve banners. So um, we'd have to make an official. What color they are? That's right. <laughs> yes. Colonial blue. We've been yes. We yeah, we, we chose historic colors. So uh, story, I'll so show you. The ones in town hall. Oh, actually, it's good that you brought it up. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Just go back to the success. Yep. The location that's the 994-1 and the corner of the entrance to Jack South Bank, I believe. Yep, exactly. correct. And the little red schoolhouse is the adjoining driveway. Correct. Um, there are 18 wheelers that pull in to Jack South Bank every day. And that banner on that pole, and that pole has been hit and taken down and fallen down and uh, might want to find a different pole. Unless that's where... I'm not sure how we make the reason it. I chose that poll is because it has it would like look nice to have them on both sides of the street. Yeah. If you take that out, you kind of don't. It's totally up to you guys. Um, we can use breakaway band, you know, breakaway hardware. So okay. I, I will say the hardware that we're using now. Um, I met out with the Eversource guy and he liked the hardware we're using now because he said if anybody hits it, that's just going to break. Okay. And it's not going to take the pole with it. Oh, well, right. uh, okay. So he liked the hardware we use right. now, actually. So uh, the breakaway is like one step up. It's a little more expensive. It was in the quotes yep. there. Yep. Um, we'd look to you guys for guidance on which, which you would prefer. Um, I think we can make it work with the ones that we have now because like I said, Eversource was fine with it. and They're ultimately the okay. ones who own the poles. Okay, that would be my only my only question. Okay. Um, big trucks coming in. Good to know, though. I didn't know that one got hit. No, I was just going to say is what, how much, I guess, we look at. Like, I see the price for the banner, but then there's installation, and then there's... Yeah, I unfortunately don't have a quote for installation, but I just kind of know based off the past. Is that going to have to be put out for uh, bid? We have to figure all that procurement stuff out. Yeah. I haven't got to that point yet. Um, if it's under, it's 10, under 10, you don't have to, but it might have to be prevailing wages because it's public works. Right. So I got to figure that out. So we just can never really figure out if it's prevailing wages or not. We have is just for the cost of 10,000 would also include the installation. Is there, is there one place where we can see the 10,000? Uh, I just, I'm sorry, I didn't, I added all the stuff up. I forget what it came up to. And then I added a, a you know, a cushion I thought was reasonable for the installation. And that got to 10,000. Um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't do out the math anywhere. But I can send that out to people if you want. Is, is there a, is there a timing issue here on ordering? Uh, there would be, but maybe you could make a conditional and say, you approve the 10,000 conditional of me yeah, sending you just a, get the additional uh, down on, yeah. you know, cost of the banners, yep. whatever. Yep. That's simple. I think that's reasonable. Um, yeah. Okay, great. And then maybe if there's also maintenance, like if one does come down and needs to get put back up or something, maybe there should be a little buffer for that so it can just be taken care of. That Cer yeah, so cer buffer. certainly that's something you guys could consider. Um, because we are now we're going to have four different locations with banners and we do have the ones that um, the Bass River Bridge yeah, and yeah. I mean we take care of them you guys pay for the uh, the chains outs so typically the cost is just um, it's mostly just police detail mm -hmm. a small cost for the for the labor but uh, yeah I mean we could add an extra question but I think 10,000 will certainly get you through you know this year and then if we have the need for more we can always come back to you guys but mm -hmm. if you want to add in some money. I don't mean to prolong the conversation, but does this extend far enough for everyone? 
I'm just thinking of what's not covered down to the post office around the corner and then up past the banks is that would be kind of much further down this is the village center area so i don't know it'd be to get down to the post office that would be a bit further we could extend it down a little bit um but to be honest these are the ones that i got approved by eversource it would be a bit of a process to get some more added on um, this is a great start yeah, yeah. yeah. we can always start. add on yeah. more um, and then the ones in front of town hall i didn't know we could either do four or five of them. We could do one across the street or just do four on one side of the street. I honestly don't know which would look better, just have four on one side or have one on the other side as well. I like the two facing each other. That, that's kind of like a gateway. The fact that... I like them all. That looks good. All right, so I'll do five of them there. Yeah, it makes an impression. All right, sounds good. And which one's for, for the town hall, Kyle? Okay. Uh, those are the veteran ones. Because ah, okay. right. that was a comment that Tracy Post made to us. She wanted to honor the veteran. So I yeah. um, figured this would be a good way to do it. All right. The graphics are great, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of help from Mary. Mary did all the uh, work with downtown decorations to, to get all the requests about adding her, her website. Right. Right. So that was the other thing you guys will have to decide on. Yeah. Do we want Yarmouth Cape Cod on the bottom? So the Yarmouth Cape Cod will be the hero down here. I, you know what? I, all, all I'm going to say is I'm, I, it's probably okay to add it, but whether or not anybody's going to be able to read it is going to be another. I mean, it's only two inches. What's it by? Yes, I know. I'm fine with it. Leaving it on? Yeah, yeah, she did a lot of work to help us do this. Just get some, there should be some attribution. I yeah, I agree. Yeah, there's a lot of people that walk too, so it may not be somebody who's driving. Yeah, especially the ones that are people that fish. I don't know. I still can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking two all inches. Of them. Just, no, that would be yeah, just for the Parkers River Bridge. Bridge. Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's just four it. of them. Yeah, Parkers River Bridge. Roger that. Okay with the veterans <clears throat> one from the town hall and where they're going. We're okay with the welcome to Yama. Where they're going, it'll be a pump line on the bottom. There's no and pirate flag on that one. <laughs> Not pirate mile. <laughs> it is true. And it is pirate. We're okay with the blue design on the sick bay. Cool, oh, right? Blue, yeah. Good. Antique blue. Did you guys already vote on the funding part? No, so I right. need a motion from someone. Up, you want to, I suggest up to up to the up to 10,000. If you want to add in a cushion for future changeovers, you can maybe do up to like 15. Up to you guys. I could, I could give, I, I would say probably let's do up to 10 and I'll give you the breakdown so that, and then if we want, we can always come back and, yeah. I'll make a motion uh, to fund the installation, the design, build out, and installation of the, of the two and no, the three different style banners located at Parker's River. Across from Yarmouth Town Hall and in the um, Yarmouth Board Center stretch there, um, as proposed. Do you want to take that from physical improvement fund? Yeah, physical improvements. Yeah, thank you. Second. 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 We have any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you, guys. Do you need a separate group that to add the Yarmouth to just do it? No, no, that's good enough. Okay, then the third one is a request for funding for wayfinding signage designs. For wayfinding for the entire town. For the entire town, yep. So we got a grant um, from the Destination Development Capital Fund. Uh, we put in a grant application per your guys' direction for wayfinding design. Um, so we got $45,000. It requires a one to one match. Uh, I was thinking we'll do 55. You could request 55 from you guys for a $10,000 cushion to bring it up to 100,000. And this would be for the like master plan and design of wayfinding signage in the town of Yarmouth. We would obviously need to figure out construction funding after that, but one step at a time. Um, so we would put out an RFP for some sort of design firm to, to work with us for this project. So my only comment is that, um, I mean, I believe, to the best of my knowledge, the Pinkot Chamber received a million dollars for a wayfinding program. And it would be nice, to, and I think we, I, we had this conversation.
to me. But to the extent that there should be some dovetail, not to reinvent the wheel if they have actually come into to Yarmouth. And I'm happy to, to reach out and inquire about that further. I don't want that inquiry to hold it up, but I do, I'm, I'm pretending like the extra was it. Yeah. Yeah. So to the extent that, that that there might be some overlap, we wouldn't want to. We would want to add on to it, not. Yeah. So design's already been done for something the same. I, I'm not quite sure. Right. So if it's if it's up. the Expedition Blue mm -hmm. uh, project, that's different than the wayfinding signage. I would say that's kind of a special wayfinding signage. Um, we have we have one at Smugglers Beach, um, and it's part of like that Cape Cod thing. Um, this would be more so like, oh, you're coming off the bike trail here are the commercial areas in Yarmouth on a nice sign kind okay. of thing. So you're you're saying that you've already the town has already taken advantage of the Cape Cod Chambers wayfinding program. Mm -hmm. If it's the one that I'm thinking yeah, of, yeah. Well, yeah. Assuming that is so, that it was a dedicated to, to beach areas. Yeah. We, yeah, we had to pick a uh, site. We picked Smuggler's Beach because um, it's got a lot of blue economy history and that's present future. So did they share with you sort of like the design and then the concept about promote, you know, yep. marine environment, et cetera, et cetera. And so would we not want to just try to duplicate or at least try to mirror the best points of that? Uh, I mean, I'd like to be Yes, consistent. no. Um, I just think it's a little bit different. It, that's more of like a special project because it's talking about blue economy, whereas the wayfinding signage that we envision is directing people to points of interest in Yarmouth, which it does do to a certain extent, that one, but that's not the main focus of that. It's to educate people on the value of blue economy and the present and going forward, basically. So it's a little bit different. Well, where it's a little bit different, it's fine. But where there are, where we should consider being consistent in order to create and take advantage of what's already been done to make our project look even bigger and more formidable. I think we, I leave it to you, Kyle. Don't reinvent the wheel, you're saying. Don't reinvent the wheel and take the make, best points. Yeah, right. I think you make have. a good point and we can include that directive in the RFP. Yep, yep, yeah, so certainly. So, it's kind of like with the marketing RFP when you said you got to be aware of the visioning plan and take that into consideration mm -hmm. with your proposal. It'd be the same kind of thing mm -hmm. in the RFP. Yeah, I think a lot of the blue economy stuff was using the QR code to yep. get the information. It's not that the information is there. Yeah, yeah. You have to go at that next step. You got to go on their website. This sign, which would kind of yeah. how to get to the, how the bike shop. You know? yeah. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> but also point people in the direction of this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, they might propose usage yeah. of QR codes with whatever. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay, so, what do you need to So, it's a request for up to $55,000. It could come from either unallocated or economic development projects um, for this. For this thing. You guys, you have 144000 unallocated. Um, so, um, so, even though it's unallocated, you, would, you want to assign it to a bucket. Yep. So basically allocated. So, the unallocated is it's um, that that part of the bucket is going to keep rolling over until you expend that that balance because going forward with the new buckets, unallocated isn't one of them. If that's, that's making right, sense. Right. So I don't know how you want to handle that. If you want to save it for one big project or if you want to keep drawing it down over time. Like I said, I do think you could take this out of economic development projects because it certainly complies with. That definition. How much we have um, economic development? You will have one hundred and five, a little over one hundred and five thousand, yeah. starting July first. I'm comfortable with that because, I, as being new, I would rather have that money dedicated to traditional economic development projects. That's so, right. is is what did you use town signage for? Is that more? Is that more based? That was the sign in front of the um, chamber. Mm -hmm. okay. so that I, nature, I think yeah. I would be comfortable in the signage um, allocated uh, from moving funds, moving the funds from an allocated to signage and letting that be the appropriate bucket. So that's why I'm just going through this. Yeah, it would go into physical improvement. But this is a study, so I don't know if that's like physical improvement, so it doesn't cover yeah. But the unallocated is the only. 
place we can go and pull from if we wanted to add it into any other buckets. Right. In the future, that's all we have. And then once that's gone, it's gone. Okay, so. Oh, that's what this PI means? Yeah, it's physical improvement. So I think I have kind of a consultant to study I mean, it will it will lead to physical improvements, hopefully. So I think you could. It's really what's called the oats and grain. What can this money be used for? Well, it's for the development of a master plan and design for wayfinding. Yeah, I mean, I'd recommend you take that on allocated. Yeah. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Okay. I'm, I'm curious. Now, how does will this wayfinding project be integrated into an overall economic development plan? And are we now spending $75,000 and $55,000 to essentially accomplish pieces or an overall plan? That's a, this is a lot of money. So for a lot of studies that end up, as we know, put on a shelf, I kind of got a Well, this one will be used to develop construction specs to get a project to the finish line. It's not going to sit on a shelf, but. Well, I didn't hear that. So maybe yeah. I need to. Well, to what would you think? This, what would you think? Yeah. 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 <laughs> to do the design, get it ready, put up for a package from the RFP to do the actual implementation. Okay. Yeah. So my comments still location too. Yeah, that's going to so be in term it. design. Yeah. Implementation and location. Yeah, it's got to determine a lot of stuff. That's why okay. the hundred thousand dollar figure is a lot, but they got a lot to do as well. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. More questions? I I, I think I was very clear. I don't I I. I I don't really appreciate this piecemeal approach. Um, I understand that they, they worked hard to get a grant, so I don't want to forego having the match, you know, meeting the matching funds. But you know, it seems like we're we're building a, a, a car with like, well, we're going to choose these wheels, and somebody else is going to choose this, and we're not really that we may end up with something that doesn't work. Just you know, the reason I put in this this grant application is because of your guys' insistence on me doing so. Yep. So, yeah, no, I mean, I'm a little I, I will, confused. Yeah, no, I, I, I will speak with this. This is more than just this meeting. This has been an ongoing consideration of this committee for quite some time now that we wanted to, we felt that signage around town needed to be improved. And we've asked that this happen. We were the ones who asked Kyle to find out what was available for grant funding to try and tackle this. So I understand your comments. But this is more than just today's meeting. Let's let, let's give out you know another forty five thousand bucks or whatever the number is fifty five thousand. And it's not. No, I don't want to put this. It's not. It's not a subset of something that's already there. It's, it's something much higher and higher. Thirty thousand feet, forty thousand feet. It's going to look at all the other studies that we've done and incorporate those into what they're going to come up with. So. Okay, I'm not hearing that at all. Cool. That's why I'm sitting at That's this right. table. That's but um, and I don't I don't want to I don't want to dismiss the fact that you guys were part of this. Mm -hmm. And yet it would be very nice to see when we finally talk about strategy, how the, all of these pieces are going to fit into one long term. Yeah, and I, and I think that we looked at this as a public improvement project for the town of Yarmouth, okay. more so. That's really how we. That's how I interpreted the initial discussions back a year ago. On this particular project was yeah. is a public improvement project for the citizens of Yarmouth because you know or in the visitors because truly you know I mean I'll use the ladder it's kind of started from the ladder sign it's a discussion point right, right. but they were in deplorable shape right, right. and you know those ladder signs to me should all have a chainsaw taken to it. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's what they're all illegal non-conforming signs but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the long and short of it is yeah. that's where it all kind of started from it. What can we do to improve, you know, finding your way around Yarmouth, especially if you're a visitor, never mind if you're a resident. And that's where this all came from. So I really, I hear your comments that, yeah, there's a lot of money towards these, these studies. And I'm not a huge fan of spending money on studies either, but I do think the outcome of this would, as long as the outcomes in implementation, I'm 100% yeah. for it. It's going to be up to us to say it's not that. All right. So, that said, do we have a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, 
allocate 55,000 from the unallocated funding um, for the development of uh, request proposals. What, what are we gonna call this? It's a, you know, master plan and design for wayfinding okay. signage. Yeah. Can I have a second on that? Second. All right. Any more discussion on it? This doesn't fly in the face of the $75,000 that Nothing. we've allocated to study the diff. Amongst other things, but yeah, it's not just 75, not just for the diff, but no, it doesn't impact that. But that study's going to be more related to potential zoning, change uses, usage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Not. I don't think it's out of the question that, again, we we ask whoever's going to get this money to work in conjunction with other people that we've got working in town. Yeah. So we don't yeah. build a car while we're driving it. Certainly, I'll, I'll make sure we run the, uh, the RFP past you guys. So it's, you know, you guys get a chance to look at that before it goes out. And if anybody wants to be on the RFP evaluation team, be happy to bring you on board. Have we seen the RFP on the 75? I haven't heard anything about that stuff. I can ask for an update if you'd like. That would be helpful, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then it's about it. It's about the integration. So thank right. you for, yeah. And then that's that, really then we can be in charge. Of, because, yeah, that's um, then we can be asking people yeah, to come in and give us updates yeah. well, on how they're integrating. Right? Good point. Sure. I, I don't disagree. And the timing of it is somewhat critical too, because you know, you could get more bang for the buck depending upon maybe one firm with multiple divisions could give us a better rate than sure. three different two different firms. So that's always um, but the, the town, I'm sure the town administrators will recognize. Yeah. Well, we had a motion, we had a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um just a couple of hits up there. I think Maria, you gave us the idea of this grant was opportunity was out there and Kyle went after that. So I just wanted to acknowledge you guys for, for doing that. So thanks. And I, and I think also the town of Orleans had picked up some money on this for way funding. Did I, why did I remember sending you something a while ago? Well, there was, was I think it might've been Orleans worked with the Cape Cod Commission on a uh, wayfinding yeah, thing. And I reached out to the Cape Cod Commission yeah, and they're yeah. too busy. Okay. This, this is a short editorial comment. I, I've been telling some people on the board that this is a good example of going after some other money. Yeah. That's not necessarily local tax money to bring into the community. And if there was a person or people assigned to this function, we could bring in a lot more dollars. It would augment this, the tax levy budget. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep our on that. But yeah. thank you for that heads up. You're welcome. Thanks. I mean, to the extent that I actually worked in, at the state and with these various departments, I want to thank you know the director of oral, Pickle oral, for mm -hmm. keep, at least keeping putting her eyes on this and. Uh, and Kyle for, you know, hard work. So. That's good. Okay, we have a review of past meeting and minutes, June 14th, 2022. We have a motion? Approve it, sir. Second. Second. Any discussion? I just want to make a note. I'm not going to ask that it be amended, but I think I did start off with that I thought the recreation marijuana we that we should be exploring other economic development opportunities that I didn't just wasn't carping on the substance itself. So I'm you know I'm not making a motion, it's, but I, this conversation is about economic development. So. Okay. That was my only comment. Okay. And we vote on that day. We we got, yeah, we got a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. And we have community member and staff updates. Anybody have I have some. Oh, All right. Uh, planning board was it's been pretty busy um, over the last couple of hearings. A couple of big ones on um, the Davenport companies over on 6A, the cluster subdevelopment. Oh, right, right, right. Um, we, we had a public hearing and 
uh, that was the hearing was extended uh, to June 16th um, because they, they they wanted to review their proposal and come back. And so they at the June 16th meeting came and did request an extension, which we granted to them. Um, and Kathy has not yet heard anything back from them. So that's kind of been a holding pattern. Um, they did agree to look at relocating the 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 um, opening to the development where it is on 6A, but it's, so it's not directly across Hockenham. Um, but you run up with all sorts of uh, uh, I want to call it landscaping topographical issues on that corner. I mean, I think we've all probably been around that corner. Um, slopes up is a relatively um, is, is good size scale. So, but they said they were going to uh, try to look at it. They're all, they were also looking to into um, possibly combining four of the units under a single septage. That would be innovative and alternative. That. Mm -hmm. On that side of the property, um, it is um, uh, it, it leads towards Mill Creek and um, the headwaters of Bass River. The ones on the north side of the property lead down towards um, Gilbert West Road is on that side, uh, and that's that's much safer. And they're, they're, they're not as they're not as worried um, about septage so um, and Title Five issues. So they they've got that. They're working on it. So we'll wait to see what they come, come back with. Um, but we have to grant them a, um, uh, a an approval um, with regard to it being less than 400 feet from the nearest curb cut. That's the real, that's the real, it's one of the bigger issues. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so we're waiting to, we're waiting to get that. And then, um, and then they have to go to the zoning board of appeals for several mm -hmm. other um, mm -hmm. conditions that uh, need to be met. Um, the other one was the road project, which was the J-Mart on 6A, right. on, 28. on 28. Yeah. Um, and we had a public hearing at the same time, that's in June 15th. And um, the uh, public showed up and they were um, very, uh, very vocal about their um, uh, opposition to the plan. One of the abutters um, was represented by an attorney, um, and the attorney um, uh, uh, spoke for quite some time um, and uh, had made some really good points. And the audience, um, the members of the public who were there, um, were, were very pleased that uh, there was this kind of legal argument put in front of them, not just me, Joanne Crowley, saying I'm opposed to this, but an actual legal um, a legal argument that well, there were some I, issues. Can I ask you, what was the legal argument? It's an existing business there today. So. Um, the, he, 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 he was concerned that and, and the planning board also had some questions as, as to whether a road project mm -hmm. can be a gasoline station. Mm -hmm. Confused. A very What's large a gas a ro road stands for revitalization <laughs> overlay, overlay district uh, something, something district. district. <laughs> it's a special zoning district that's on top of like two other right. yeah. zoning yeah. Uh, districts. Uh -huh. And what it what its purpose and intent was when it was enacted mm -hmm. was to encourage developers to do top of shop housing. Mm -hmm. So have retail on the bottom, have um, have uh, apartments on top. Um, Gas stations weren't kind of in that in that mix of things because uh, you're not going to you're not certainly yeah, not going to build yeah. on top of the yeah. of the gas station. But one of the road requirements is that the frontage be um, um, mostly the a, a new facade on a building, a nice new look, that Cape Cod look, and parking be in the rear. Right, this was the object. This was the object. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. and and it was. A five bed, a five, to actually a ten bay gas station. So it had five ten, five fueling st uh, stations. Right. Which is would would have been, I think, the only ten bay one on twenty eight in Yarmouth. Right. It was big, and it's a small. It's a, it was less than an acre. So there was uh, the concerns expressed by the public were the number of 
of fueling stations. There are only two there now. The condensation of all of the parking in the front, which was really not in compliance with the architectural design, which is some have said that the road projects are meant to be looked at as to whether or not they're good looking, mm -hmm. that they're handsome, they're pretty, mm -hmm. they make a difference mm -hmm. in terms of what the people see. And the gas station, how could a gas station, the public said, how can a gas station possibly fit that? In addition, um, there were concerns that um, there was going to be a drive through for a coffee right. convenience. And the drive through wrecked all the way around the building. So all the idling cars would be around the building and the balconies on the apartments above would be above the idling vehicles. In like the city. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a little bit. So the public also had main concerns about that. So after the public, uh, after we asked our questions and the public um, um, expressed their views, um, Paul Tardif, who was the attorney representing the JMart um, owners, um, uh, asked us asked to withdraw the application without prejudice, and we said yes. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We withdrew it without prejudice. Mm -hmm. um, to resubmit, you think, or a different? Yeah, I think so. I, I think so, 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 how does this board committee um, provide? First of all, evaluate or and or encourage a revitalization of existing businesses, gasoline station or not? Not, did not even let's not, not including consideration of the planning board, the technical aspect, you know, aside from the technical considerations that the planning board has to make, has to make. And then how do we, how, if we approve, how does this committee actually like go to the planning board and be a member of say, I'm not saying this one in particular, but if let's say we want to encourage improvement of businesses and we did ask specifically, we want to increase the number of jobs do we just say, send a letter or so, do we go so to the planning board I can and answer say, your first question. This um, committee actually did support the application request. I know, did we send a letter? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. oh, and then yes, did, yes, I have yes, a partial yes. answer to your other question. Yes. Because I'm on this committee, I have, I have the um, fortunate occasion to sit on another committee, design review. And I supported the application and design review committee as well. Now, the last part of your question is we we have that way we can go to the planning board and support it things we certainly can do that so so my larger question though is if it's not falling is are there programs that i'm not aware of that i should be educating myself upon that would actually encourage revitalization of an existing well this particular yeah. thing this particular um zoning overlay yeah um was designed and was intended to give a break to developers in terms of frontage site setbacks, rear setbacks. You didn't have to follow every single thing to the T. If, if, if you put your parking in the back and you made it, the front of the building matched an architectural design standard that is written in stone. I mean, it's a, it's a great book. You can pick it up and read it and see exactly what we mean when we say it needs to have the Cape Cod look yep. in the architectural design standard. For right. the photographs, it says this is what it looks like, yep. um, and it has to meet that standard. So we've already said, and we have um, this stuff, and the difficulty is encouraging property owners to do this. And so JMART did try. We give them well, a you, lot of credit. You must JMart. know where they're, these uh, identify the properties to which this would be applicable. Because the corridor along 28 is really yes, yeah, not the overlay, there's not much land. On, the, on, the overlay district so is residential is, right? is on the map. It is a specific. So it's already. It okay, is, then I will educate myself. It's a specific okay. overlay on the on the on the. It's, it's, it's a separate part of the bylaw. Yeah. Did design review support the project? No, I know you yes. said you did. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. So it was the yes. issue about parking in the front the, and the, the, with planning. Oh, the issue was parking in the front. Um, uh, and that was the primary, if you will, litmus test. I guess where I'm going with this. We, review, we supported it from this committee. Yep. Design Review supported it. The abutters, which you're never going to get any project without abutters to say, unless you, I don't know what, what project they'd support, to be yep. honest with you. Yep. This is an existing business, which already is a gas station. Right. 
So I guess my one question I'm asking, uh, only just for my own clarification, is it the drive through in the parking that was the real contention or just the overall whole project? For, for us, the criteria that we used in design review, the criteria that we used mm -hmm. when we wrote our letter in support was specific mm -hmm. about the economic. Hey, the design review is a checklist. That's all, yep. That's all it, they yep. just, yes, right. no, or not right. applicable. Right. Right. So they were right. able to check enough boxes. Right. Yes, no. Yeah. Ours is, is governed by mm -hmm. a completely different set of standards and regulations. And it's the, the, um, the design review that we had to look at as the approving authority was really very black and white. Right. And, 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 I, and, I and we did we didn't vote on it. Right. Okay. We didn't vote on it. We made some suggestions right. as to is there some way on this lot that you could put the and I've seen it. Um and I've sat through enough planning articles knowing that they probably said if we let you vote on it, it ain't gonna pass. Oh yeah, I think so. So, and that so that's why we drew without prejudice. Yeah. So my, my my only point of even discussing it any further is the fact that there is an existing gas station where they wanted to upgrade something. Now whether they went so far this way with the pendulum, maybe they'll come back and be somewhere in the middle. That's all. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think what it boils down to is they use the road. You can do multiple routes of development. They use the road application route, right. which probably wasn't the right route to to use yeah. because they didn't comply with. It. Yeah. Is basically what it boils down. And it, it makes it an easier process. We approve it. And then there are mm -hmm. limited interactions with right. zoning board. They the project is still alive and they can go to the zoning board of appeals. The project isn't dead. No, oh, right. But they just can't use the road as their avenue to get it done. Right. And they'd be very hard to prove hardship going to ZBA building a new gas station with all those features that you described. Do they so, need a variance? Do you know? They would probably yeah, have they to have a question. Yeah. Yeah. You're right about that. They'll probably right. go back and redesign. Yeah, I hope they do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, put the put the the a smaller number of fuel oh, station. Yeah. Put them to the side. Yeah, yeah. I I just saw some. Right. I mean, but it's a it's a relatively small lot. But the idea behind it was have a convenience store, have top of shop housing. I mean, it's a great. It was yeah. I, really. Yeah, I mean, I I think you know we saw it. And I think it's a neat concept. I think they probably went a little too far with what they were trying to do. Or, uh, you know, a drive through Dunkin' Donuts. How many more of those do we need? You know, all that stuff. But, you know, and you know, I understand. I mean, believe it or not, at one point in my career, many moons ago, I actually ran a gas station. And you don't make a lot of money on gas. Now, now I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> but I'm talking in 1984. I, think I managed to sell gas station for a year and a half. You make it with five cents a gallon. That's what you were making back then. Per gallon of gasoline sold. So it's all about volume. You know, right. so yeah. and food, right? Snacks. Yeah, that's even before the days that had we had a there was a service station, the one station avenue. That was actually one of my first jobs. I was going to college. I managed that gas station, and uh, it, you know, like I said, it, it, there wasn't a huge. So it's all about volume. So that's why you'd want ten pumps. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, if it's not going to fit in a lot. I thought the lot was bigger than that. I thought no, they were taking less than an acre. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Not they were combining two. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah but they are. Right. Right. But it does raise a very interesting um, overall uh, issue for this or this committee is that because I I've been talking to some people and the messaging was entirely different than when the actual outcome. Right, it was like oh no no no, but it was, it was the messaging that I was hearing, and so in fact. The messaging from the, the various committees are we encourage you to do as much as you, you you can, but there are rules and guidelines. So to that extent, and not today, but the messaging needs to be that, you know, in the event that a project comes forward that, you know, this committee might want to consider saying what we will do to encourage or facilitate or guide a, a, a business to, to meet the, the town guidelines. And it's not to suppose that we're going to be their legal counsel, but it's actually to make get the message out to businesses who want to come here. It's like, no, we're going to go out of our way to work with you as much as we can. But so so don't go to the next town over for your project. Yeah. Stay and and, we, and, and uh, you know, it's deal, a, it's, deal with it. That's a, that's a valid point. I mean, to me, the one place we would love to target is Great Island Plaza. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's at a major and important intersection and. It's just, that's just turned out to be just a very difficult uh, project with the owner not being here in the United States, right. the money 
you know, getting capital together to do it. And mm. But we had plans. She had plans. Yeah. I saw and stuff. That it's unfortunate. They did clear a lot. I don't know if you saw it. That lot behind the, to the, I guess it would be to the east of it. There's a whole lot they just cleared last week. Yeah, that's a, another that was, project. I, was, I hope that yeah. was, but that, that's her property now, isn't it? It's, if, if we're talking about the same yeah, one. Yeah, it might be the brothers. There was, there was a project the planning board approved a while ago um, that is after the post office. Right. And the entryway would be after the post office and before, I think there might be a house there. Right, there Long is. driveway in and property in the back that was going to be retail was going to be office space and and um, housing mm -hmm. um, but it was tucked in behind right. and it was almost like an abutter to the great island i thought property. all that property belonged to her and her brother could, could, or could sister. be her sister yeah, her sister could, could be so yeah. this is one of those situations but they have, you have seen some i mean the trees are coming down and, They're gone. Yeah, yeah yeah where um, that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts had a point of contact with her. We were trying to guide her on the state program. So this obviously, I'm no longer in that job, so I can't help pull it together, except maybe I can. So the state has a vacant storefront pro uh, program that we should consider. We haven't adopted it yet, Kyle, correct? The vacant storefront. Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay, so it's a program within the um, Office of Economic and Housing and Development and administered by the Economic assistance coordinating council that provides incentives for businesses that want to actually that that would be a prime location it's incumbent upon the town the town to put in the application and say we want to designate this area you can do it we can do it by specific or you know or, or pieces they just want to know what you're what you're targeting um, I know, I'm pretty sure that that program is still in place and I, I'd be actually happy at another meeting. I'll make that, I could come in here. And I've forward. looked into that program in the past. I have to go back and dig up my emails, but I think it basically wasn't a fit for Yarmouth because we don't have a continuous downtown. It needs to be like a, an area that has a lot of vacant storefronts, which we have hodgepodge around town, but it needs to be more of a downtown okay. area. So here's the thing about the state. If it doesn't absolutely fit, you can go in and ask them for this is our situation and for an exception. So I, I understand, you can't look at it, you just can't look at it. Does it fit in the box? No, can we ask if the box be made in a rectangle? Yeah, you can ask. It's, they're just regulations made by a volunteer committee. We, we can do it. And, um, and I'm suggesting that we have the opportunity to do it now before. Well, in the instance the of year. Great Island, they did apply. Right. And it goes underutilized wrote, properties yeah, program. I, did, I think this committee back the way back when wrote mm -hmm. a letter. I think mm -hmm. the planning board wrote a letter. Right. Maybe even the board of selectmen. A couple of years ago. Yeah, for yeah. a grant. Did we have her? Sidara was. Yeah, yeah, uh, was, was, yes, what, was, was from choosing his Yeah, yeah, we had her on the. Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. forgot that. So anyway, um, I mean, I I know that, and and yet we just shouldn't be feel like we we're stuck in a box. It certainly would be nice to see Great Island, that whole plaza, something happened with it, you know. It's either a bulldoze run through it, yeah. burn to the ground, or be it redeveloped, one or the other, but it's it's in tired shape, it really is. I think it's the facade program. Wait, wait, what are you referencing? Thank you, Star Frank. Yeah. That's Thank all I have for All right, Joanne, good. And I missed the RAC meeting, so. But that's just one. Come on. So you're suggesting a road trip down 28 to introduce ourselves to all these business owners? Gage, let us know what we're, that we're here for them? That I I think Kyle's been trying yeah, to follow up. Yeah. But yeah. Talk to them all the time. But you know what? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm up for it. Certainly. I have to refresh myself on the vacant storefront guidelines. Looked into it Kyle, over a year I'm just ago. suggesting it. It's, it's one, again, Yep, want just, a tool in the toolbox. I've it seen was it. something that I had initially started talking to them about five years ago. Now. I've seen it used with great effectiveness in places like Springfield and Worcester and some of the more urbanized areas mm -hmm. where yeah. there's no hope for any of those places unless you really yes. you've got to make the biggest possible carrot you can think of to get people to go back into those neighborhoods. Well, well, part of it too is is what the city or town can do as far as the public infrastructure right out front right out front 
they do that. So that's how we did in Worcester. We did we'll come along do the street and sidewalks in front of your building if you do something on the side. So yeah. yeah. So but you're right, Maria, there's a lot more than just one program that you could you could allocate to one address. There's a lot of yeah. programs you could overlap in, in one one area. Right. And Kyle's only one person. This is where and our our representative is. now is kind of photos. not present, but that's okay. The, my former position and uh but um with that being said i'm gonna put my money where my mouth is how's that how's that? you don't have to get chased down I don't think okay, okay. <laughs> we got thank you good. any other yeah. uh just real quick tom nick and now looks like he's got his hand raised okay tom you're up. hey good evening, everybody thanks you uh, thank you all very much uh for the hard work that you're doing i just wanted to uh talk about the free winding uh the signs and uh, uh, to make sure that the business community signs that we have in town, uh, we have some missing. And I'm pretty sure, I'm hoping that the study is going to look at, I think Joe Manning had mentioned before, eight months or so, that we have new business districts that don't have signs. Uh, the one that ends on Hallett, I think, got ripped off on Willow Street. There's one on Midtech Drive. And, uh, you know, some of these signs are very important. And for the people that don't have them, we have a great business district on White's Path that does not have a sign. And some of these signs have the town seal on it, which is probably not appropriate anymore, but I hope that the study will include some of these areas that haven't been included before as the business community is trying to struggle to survive here in Yarmouth. So I um, would just like to add that. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, we'll definitely make sure that's a good comment. Yep. Definitely make sure that's yep. included. Yep. All right. Uh, some staff updates. Does anybody else have any for me before I go? We're good here. So there's a RAC meeting last night. We had members from the Mass DEP come in and present. Um, basically, they showed us what the stick is for the, you know, the carrot and the stick for doing wastewater, which is that if we don't get our watershed permit, I think it's within like five years or so, uh, they can mandate uh, septic system upgrades for residents. Um, so it's basically we're seeing the regulatory um, yeah. hammer come down. Oh, right. Water Resources Advisory Committee, it's the Wastewater um, Committee. But we're well on our way to getting the watershed permit. I actually don't really think the news would really changes anything for us. It changes it more for, for communities like Brewster, who are planning on doing a lot of aquaculture instead of doing some sort of wastewater system. Um, but it definitely increases the sense of urgency to get wastewater done, which we've already, you know, been beating the drum on for a while because we knew something like this was coming. But we finally got, there was a letter sent to the Cape Cod towns on June 1st, basically outlining their new regulatory strategy. And they came and gave the RAC a presentation on it. And it is, there are, it's proposed regulations at this point, and they're working with the different Cape Cod towns to try to be flexible uh, and be amenable to our needs and, all that stuff. Um, so it was a good discussion. Um, recommend taking a look at it on YouTube if you're interested. Uh, and uh, the presentation is also on our website too. Yeah, you sent you sent this. Chris. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, have, have, as part of the regulations, I didn't have a chance to go through it, but are they su suggesting when they say an upgrade to uh, the Title Five kind? Of, what are they talking about? I think it's like an you know IA system kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and they feel confident that something can be developed quickly or they have something already that you could go buy? Yeah, I think they have some sort of technology already in mind. I, I don't, I'm not the best person to ask about that technical stuff. So I just they, know the big I picture. Just curious as to how they talked about, they it. Talked about some different IA stuff. stuff. Yeah, Bruce Murphy was there and asked some questions. Yeah, I suppose there's some guys developed a system down in Falmouth. And right, it's mm -hmm. like a pilot that, thing. Yeah, yeah, that instead of it, the final waste, Meeting through stone, it meters through um, mulch. black mulch, and that's what's supposed to capture. I guess it does work, but I don't that's, know how, the, that's a shubal you know, right. yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know how long it would last for under normal use. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, Joanne, what they did say is that the technology isn't necessarily proven yet, especially yeah. in this area but, where yeah. it gets cold. Right. But, um, yeah. but to Kyle's point, it's the stick because. It's going to cost a homeowner three times as much as it is to get the pipe to the sewer line out there in front of their house. So, 
Um, and then you own it, you gotta right. And then they're gonna have then they're gonna have annual maintenance, and then they're gonna have inspections, and mm -hmm. you know, each mm -hmm. each it's not a road we want to travel down. No, no. I, I think if anyone's looking at it as an alternative, they're probably not no. thinking about it clearly. Mm -hmm. Right. Just gonna get a heads out of the sand and just realize that. The rest, the, the rest of the world just putting yeah. in, I mean, sewage. <laughs> the economies of scale have, have been proven for centuries. So I think it's, a week to, yeah, what's going to cost yeah. I still look at, you know, I used to work up in North Conway, Conway or New Hampshire. I mean, that's a hundred miles in the middle of nowhere. And they had the foresight in the seventies to say, you know what? 90% of the community of Conway, North Conway is on town sewage. Wow. That's a, Podunk little town that mm -hmm. has town sewage. You could have done that in the 70s too. Sure. Said yes to the federal mm -hmm. government saying we'll put it in at 90% of the cost. <laughs> and everybody down there is like, oh, we don't need that. Well, we're going to get built out. It's going to be all built out. And then it got all built out anyways. And now we don't have the infrastructure to deal with it. And we're, so. we're going to have to work hard to build um, build towards helping people to finance these things yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be even harder if we're trying to finance something that's three times the right. cost. Right. Right. So. It's, it's definitely a stick. What else you have uh, so broadband, we were originally supposed to talk about broadband at this meeting. Um, I'm kind of letting Paul Chaffee, who's our IT director, take the lead on this because I don't know what the heck I'm talking about in the world of broadband, and he has a lot better idea. We're supposed to be meeting with some sort of telecommunications company, I think in either July or August. We're going up to Boston to meet with them to talk about maybe some sort of pilot project to bring back to you guys. Uh, but like I said, don't ask me further about that. I'm just going to follow along and call. Is Paul know anything more about Verizon saying that they're going to finally come down to the Cape and put fiber down here? I haven't heard that, but I can ask him yeah, about could, that. Could we ask him that? Yes, yeah. Verizon. I, I, a gentleman who works for me, who used to work for Verizon, they said that they, they don't know where his sources are, but that they finally... This they, is recent news? Yeah, this is in the last month. Maybe All right. Put that on the agenda for August. Sure. And um, you you have spoken with Open Cape. Yep, we've yep. Before. When they came to us, when they when he first took over, I think it was one of I don't know that I had been appointed. I think it was just a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, they were talking about the pilot that you just right. mentioned. We were discussing an area that would be suitable that right. would mm -hmm. provide cross section residential, commercial, municipal. And we were thinking about this area back here. I think it was like maybe it's close to the drive inside. Yeah. I want to say. Right. I thought it was up that area. Well, then, to yeah, Island, probably. So. Oh, maybe, yeah. But something that like touched Swan Pond that had low income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the idea. I don't know where that where that went, to be uh, honest with you. Was almost a year ago now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I can follow up with Paul on that, but yeah. he's just going to tell me, yeah, let's go meet with these people. Mm -hmm. in July. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get yeah. Comcast in the nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So the first economic development, uh, Harwich, uh, a number of years ago, was looking into designating a corridor and making a proactive, um, being proactive to, um, with the spine coming, going down Route 28 to recruit companies that actually needed the additional uh, broadband, so like architectural companies, yep. or you know, and that and, and make an, an effort to attract them, you know. So, in this instance, it was like if you build it for the spines, there on 28, nobody's I, nobody's hooking up to it. So, but they were making up so suggesting that they were making an economic development plan to to and designating an area where they would try to attract these types of businesses. Is it something, Mr. Of. Chair, that we could take on as a small pilot program ourselves? Yeah. To good. maybe spur some activity and yeah. some... some. I mean, to Joe's point, that was the idea that we were talking about, and it kind of just lost momentum because I think it's just honestly because of other projects that people were busy on. No, I'm trying to drag us to fire on this point. committee. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, but that was kind of what we were going to bring it to you guys and, and right. have you kind of manage it, but uh, for us. But yeah. yeah, so stay tuned on that. Um, I'll talk to Paul and we'll get a game yeah, plan we'll eventually. So we can, yep. Tell him like we're very interested. Yep. Yep. Kind of moving us along. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Will do. Um, utility box wraps. I'm supposed to actually finally get the designs from uh, Sinorama this week. Um, seeing as we're not meeting in July, I was wondering if you guys would be amenable to having, I was supposed to bring it back to you guys for approve, for final approval. 
maybe one member wants to, if you want to designate one member to work with me, so I don't have to wait until August to bring it back. If you guys want to wait, that's fine, but it's just going to make the project take that, that much longer. Sure you do. Okay, <laughs> so what are we waiting for? Uh, the final like design of the utility box wraps and show you what they're going to look like on them. You know the. And my only comment was that it really should say the word Yarmouth on it, mm -hmm. so we know what we are. Yeah, it's going to say the same thing that we did last time. Mm -hmm. um, sponsored in part by the Yarmouth Tourism Preservation Fund, and it'll say the place. Okay. I think, I think you have a good life. After all, do you have any other questions? Cool. No, <laughs> the last time I brought you like the final mock-ups so you guys could but if I do that if I do that again I would have to wait until August because you're not meeting in July no what what we voted on no I just do the same thing just well they're gonna be new pictures don't put cartoon character on yeah okay yeah I'll, I'll, I'll get Ken's final buzz I was putting bugs butt on everyone <laughs> <laughs> that would certainly get attention Okay. The marketing RFP. So we awarded it to the Yarmouth Chamber of Commerce. We had two proposals. Uh, one was from, I think it was Capital Strategic Strategies. Solutions or something like that. And they had a pretty good proposal, but it was more so like handling a lot of the communications for the town as opposed to marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so the chamber was deemed to be the most highly advantageous proposal. So now we're going to be entering in contract negotiations with them. Uh, their revised proposal was below the budget that you guys set, which was 180. Um, so what was their proposal? What was their final number? I think it was 165 about. That's only an issue in the past, yeah. wasn't yeah. Well, we've done 150 in the past. Okay. Um, so it is a bit of an upgrade or a, a increase, but uh, it is within your budget that you set. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So their their new contract will start August first uh, after we negotiate. Months. Twelve. Twelve. Months. Months. Okay. I mean, is there a sense in the board? We, we had a very good meeting with uh, the two. Well, reviewing the two proposals, but is there a sense from the committee here of what is one sixty five okay number for Kyle to start going on? Not knowing what the proposal was, it certainly, yeah. you know, respect the fact that, you know, it was reviewed and I have no problem with it. Yeah. I, you know, I guess the one thing I would say is there has been, as I think everybody in this community knows, there has been some pushback by the community, you know, the town, you know, members of the community of Yarmouth on are they the best entity for the funding? That's, you know, just yeah. my quick comment. Yeah. I think we all know that there's been people discussing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until contract negotiations are, um, completed. We really have to be careful about what was discussed, but I, mm -hmm. I do think we can say that um, in reviewing the RFP, we, we did um, alert staff to just a couple of items that, um, and I'm sure staff's input concerning certain line items mm -hmm. that, um, and given them the discretion to, to choose. Sure. The concerns that had been voiced too are somewhat dismissed now that. It was yeah, an, yeah, an onslaught of. I don't think the voices are going RFP. away. That's my only point. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, no, no, I'm not. I'm not contradicting. I'm just saying the people that were talking about it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, yeah. they'll be placated by the fact that you know. Yeah, the no easy one... answer to that is it was done through an open and fair mm -hmm. you know, yeah. manner. So I, I will say, Mr. Chair, that the one thing that I'd ask is that we do. You know, I know we had requested in the past. I think biannual meetings with them. Might even be quarterly, quarterly reports quarterly that, that I send out. Yeah. That we ensure that they come to us for yep. review. Yes. Now, do you want to keep in the past? We had them actually come to the meeting. We changed it so that I was just sending them out via email. Yeah, do you want to keep it with just the email or do you have any preference? I mean, my, my quick comment to that, Mr. Chair, is that I, I'd like once a year at least they need to come to up yeah. in front of us. I don't think they need to do it every quarter. No. But my this is my thoughts, not on everybody else's. But I'd like to see him in front of us once a year. It's a lot of money. Yep. You know? So yep. yep. Sounds good. I I'd go for it. I'd say yeah. twice a year. Okay. I'd say twice a year. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I will say though, uh and, and I don't mean that you know, I think they're doing an amazing yeah. job, but I just want to make sure that it is kept as an open forum, you know. Just just so everyone knows we're on the table, just to refresh everyone's mind, because that like me and we go away from these meetings to get. But um this was the second time the RFP was issued, right? The first time. Because of the way it was written, no one complied. Right. So we had to send that out again. So um, second time we got another entity in, and the entity was, as Kyle said, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I 
I think I, what I said was if you, if we were looking for, the town was looking for someone to help educate townspeople on the need for wastewater, this other firm would have been the perfect one to do it because that, that's exactly what they did. They were hired by towns throughout the state of Massachusetts to um, help with grant programs like the opera money, opera uh, money, uh, those type of programs. So solicit public input, get comments, but stuff that the town didn't want to do. So uh, as far as comparison wise, then, you know, the chambers just stuck, stuck right up. So, and I'd be happy to, if anyone wanted to complain, I'd I'll we'll send them all. The, send them all to Steve. <laughs> you send them send them Steve. Can I see the responses? Yeah. Yes, you can. It's you all public, public record. Now. Absolutely. It's yeah. public after the contract. Is yeah. Public. Yeah. I think I got to wait for that. But give me a copy. Just technical. All right. Um, last update is on the recreational marijuana discussion. I did not hear from anybody in terms of additional information that they were looking for. Um, I did reach out to the Massachusetts Cannabis Commissioner to invite them to one of your August meetings. They said, no, we don't come to towns to talk about it. We're regulators, we don't be on the record offering our opinion on it, basically. Um, I did also reach out to the Yarmouth Police Department to see if Frank wants to come to a meeting to talk about it. I haven't heard back yet. Um, and we did actually uh, get reached out to by the attorneys from the Emerald Grove um, Dispensary in East Ham invited you guys to take a tour of the facility if you're interested to see what it's all about. I'd be interested. Yeah, I'd be interested. So I could, if you're interested, maybe, maybe sometime, <laughs> maybe sometime in early August. Um, How did that manifest? Uh, they were listening to the meeting. I reached out. Oh, I remember. Mm -hmm. The one that was spoke. Yeah. Yeah. So. If you guys are interested, I can yes. set that up. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Absolutely. First week in August, or do you have any particular? Maybe first week in August. I'll do back by then. Yes, yes. I'll try to maybe do it on a, uh, do we have a time of the day or any sort of guidance? Just get with enough notice I can make any time. All right. Yeah. Sounds so, good. 420. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be in touch about that. Okay. Um, next meeting, we're not going to meet in July unless you guys want to for any reason. Um, and we'll figure out in August, I was thinking, I had August 9th because I had invited the Massachusetts Cannabis Commissioner for that date, but like I said, she, she declined. So um, she was very nice, she reached out, um, but yeah, they don't, they don't talk to town. So really? yeah, they were, they've been directed by their higher ups not, not to get yeah. into the weeds not on it, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so August 9th, is our next meeting? Yes. Tentatively. I need someone else to make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you, guys. Happy 4th. Yeah. Happy 4th. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah.